Oh my goodness gracious. Please, Please Lord, an edit so button. Cool. <laughs> well, I was sort of born into it. My family was um, always doing music growing up. And then in high school, when I was in high school, we went, actually we went bankrupt as a family and we became a band to make money. So I was in a family band for, for kind of the beginning part of my life. We were signed to a record label in New York City, moved to New York City, and then, uh, then I left that band and then started writing songs and I got hooked up with a publisher in New York City where I was living at the time. I don't really know when it started, but it just didn't end. <laughs> You know, the radio really in influenced me. Um, we moved around a lot, so I found myself in a car a lot, and we didn't, like, growing up as a family, we didn't get a lot of albums. So that radio was just on all the time. I just always found myself knowing any given top 10, be it country, be it pop, be it anything, hip hop, I would know all the top 10 on the, any given current radio, and that still stands for now. I go, I get in my car and it's the same top 10. I, I just know it because that's what I mainly listen to is the radio. I was working in Times Square at the time, um, among a lot of other jobs in New York just to make New York work. Um, and a producer in Nashville found my voice on MySpace in 2010. <laughs> Remember that place? <laughs> it's nobody's space now, yeah. but <laughs> back then it was MySpace. Um, and he just said, if you move to Nashville, I'll do your record. So that was November 2010. I was here January 2011. Um, that's why I moved here. You're doing it right. In this town, you can be a writer, you can get up, you can have, I have a little girl now, I have a little stepdaughter, and you know, you can have that kind of life and just write songs and have a, you know, when you're an artist, you're kind of plucked and you're sent from place to place and every opportunity could bring you to Brazil or, you know, Canada or away from home for months at a time. And I, I think I, I was like, well, I don't really want the life that comes along with, with being an artist. You're doing it, you're doing it. Every write is so different, you know. Um, sometimes that melody is written and the melody is so strong that the rest of the write, you're trying to figure out a lyric that does the melody justice. And sometimes you write the lyric and you're trying to find a melody that does the lyric justice. Um, so, you know, that changes any given room. That was, that was a crazy story because that was, when I was living in New York, I did a show at a, at a place called Rockwood Music Hall. And um, a girl came up to me after the show and just was like, I'm a fan. And her name is Randy Rosano. She's still very much my best friend, still manages my, pop, a lot of my pop stuff in, in LA. And uh, she said, I don't know what to do with you. And, but I just, I don't know, but I want to work with you. So I'm gonna throw you in rooms. I wasn't signed to the publishing company that she worked for, um, but she sneaked me in there. And that song, Mr. Taxi, was one of the first three or four co-writes I've ever done in my life. It was such a fl fluke because I wasn't, I wasn't trying for to go into that arena, um, the K-pop, J-pop world. But it was such a blessing that it came out of nowhere. Um, and now it's been cool too, is that they, they kind of big deal works with me to, to get me back into that K-pop and J-pop world and I, I love doing it. The White Room was significant because I think it was the, it was, it was good to get that out of my system as an artist, I think. It was the, the way that I could just have a full project that was just, it wasn't, it was, I produced it, I wrote it, I came up with all of the artwork, I, you know, did, and it was just a full package of, okay, I'm, it, it was almost a kiss goodbye to, to my, my artist career and the introduction into a whole new world of just being a songwriter. And so it was a nice little last hurrah. Well, this town is like, it's such a college, whether you've 
whether you go to college here or not. There's so many unbelievable songwriters in town and when I first moved here, because of that producer, I was in rooms with really, really amazing songwriters that now as just a songwriter, it's like, it's crazy the rooms I was in. And they end up, you know, if you listen and you are able to um, really let guidance happen, whether it's you know obvious in the room or just sort of a covert operation, you will you will get better as a songwriter just by things that you pick up on. And a lot of it is time too, just the and work, just the repetition of getting in the room, um, trying to get the best song every day. You know, not settling for the lyric, making every little part of it an elevation. Um, that's taken me, uh, a, you know, a, a process to get to.